Hey all brothers and sisters, my name is Captain Meatshield and welcome to Beholder 2. Now, a little over a year ago I played the first Beholder and it was a very interesting kind of dystopian totalitarian state type game uh, where you played a uh, landlord, if I remember right. Yeah, you played a landlord and it was your duty to kind of... Um, surveil your uh, your tenants, you're looking for, you know, you have various ways that you could play the game. You could either do everything that the state needed and wanted you to do, and or you could go about, like, kind of siding with your tenants and looking after them. Uh, I don't remember being particularly good at the game, but I was just checking through my Steam library to see what I wanted to maybe have a look at, and I had a little thing saying Beholder to Beta. I didn't know that they were making a sequel, and yeah, anybody that owns Beholder One uh, has access to this beta version for the second uh, for the second game, where you play more of a um, an employee of the ministry. It said something on the Steam page about you potentially being able to rise up to the ranks of prime minister. So I think you're working from within the ministry, and kind of you can go either obviously working for the state or you can be someone whose aspirations to kind of climb the ladder, as it were. So I'm really interested to see what this is going to be all about. So bear in mind that this is just the beta. Uh, they, they do state here that we're allowed to make videos on them, and people already have. So um, I, I wanted to give this a go. I wanted to see what it's like and to share it with you guys. Because I thought that Beholder 1 was a fantastic, fantastic concept for a game. It reminded me very much of kind of a cross between Papers, Please and This War of Mine. And I'm intrigued to see what this one is going to have to offer. So let's go and press play. Oh, wow. Okay, we're right in it. Transfer to the Ministry approved. Oh, is this first person? Get to work as soon as you arrive in Helmer, Jay Cunningham. P.S. Your father is dead. More info when we meet. Oh, great. I'm glad I found out this way. Jeez. Wait, I'm only getting this letter now? My dad's been dead for like three and a half years. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, right. No, it's not first person. Oh, right. Okay. I need to get to work. It's too early to go home. I am Evan Redgrave. Okay. Okay, Evan, let's get going. Um... Oh. Hi. Guess you're the one I'm waiting for. My name is George Hemnitz. Nice to meet you, Evan. Oh, nice to meet you, Evan. Sorry, I didn't see the punctuation. Uh, you must be a big shot, Evan, right? Why? I've been with the Ministry for eight years, four months, and twelve days. In that time, I've processed 18,342 applications, had 1,629 cups of coffee, and witnessed 284 incidents of civil disorder. Do you keep track of these things? Now ask me. How many times I got sent to, uh, to welcome a new employee on his first day? How many? Zero, Evan. Zilch. Not once in all those 3,052 days. Now you, so you've got to be a big deal, right? Uh, no clue. I think you got me mixed up with someone else. I'm here to be a simple clerk. Clerk, sorry. My name's Evan Redgrave. Redgrave? As in, Redgrave, Redgrave? Oh god, your father. Uh, Okay, go on, Hemnitz. What did you want to say? My deepest condolences. I can't imagine what you must be feeling right now. And to think I saw him just 58 hours and 23 minutes before he... before his death. Okay, so is it a mystery as to what, how my father died in this? I don't know. We weren't that close, to be honest. We haven't talked for a decade. I didn't even know he worked here until yesterday. He didn't just work here. Your father was one of the t most respected people in the ministry. One of the top management. And the most amazing thing is, he never looked down on subordinates. He was an open and honest man. I mean, what happened? Did police make any headway? We aren't told much. So I only have a fact or two. The rest is gossip and fantasies of daft employees. What are the facts? 47 hours and 23 minutes ago, your father fell out of the ministry's top floor window. He fell down 37 floors, hit the pavement and died on the spot. Well, I, I guess I'm happy about that. I, I would be more upset if he didn't die instantly. Jesus. Fucking hell. Law enforcement is working on finding out what happened and why. At least that's what we're told. And that's not much. Perhaps. I have some information on your father's death. But it's best to discuss it somewhere quiet after I instruct you and show you to your desk. Because, you know, priorities. Ready for your first day at the Ministry? 
Let's go. Right. Is this going to be easier to work with a, a controller? Because it's a kind of seems more like an adventure type game. Um, oh yeah, it might be actually. So let's try this. Oh, it's only kind of side scrolling anyway. The Ministry Building is rightfully considered one of the most beautiful and fully featured structures in the country. See for yourself. 37 floors, over 226 meters, 12,742 offices, and over 3,000 or 325,000 visitors a day. Sometimes I try to calculate how many consumer goods all those people could have produced if they weren't so busy waiting in line all the time. But that's usually too much for me, and I gave it, give up. <laughs> okay. Note the statue of the wise leader in the square. It took five and a half thousand tons of concrete and 2,400 tons of metal to make it. You're just full of numbers, ain't you? That statue weighs over 8,000 tons. To build it, we had to cancel the construction of eight kindergartens and a hospital. Priorities. Clearly. Impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Your father died here on the cold, indifferent pavement. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, you guys are busy chatting. Nice. Right. Okay. Um... Ministry safety isn't a se is a separate reason to be proud. The, gi the security guard is your best friend here, especially when you get along. Our guards have prevented 985 terrorist acts this year alone. That's almost four attempts a day. So just in case, carry cash. Don't ruin the sets, if you know what I mean. Um, okay. I think I know what you mean. I'm not entirely sure. Let's go. Ooh, okay. Okay, we're all good. Oh, you're not. Oh, look, someone got caught. New technologies guarding humanity. The newest developed optic fibre connects these frames. <laughs> Fucking people clapping. Jeez. Uh, connects these frames with the main ministry register. Connection speed is over 10 gigabit per second. Any prohibited items will be detected at once. We spent over 18, 180 million on developing this technology. Though you can always bypass the frame, of course, if you butter up the security. I'll bet. Well, someone's not happy. Like I said before, there's 37 floors and twice that much underground. At least according to official data. The higher the floor, the better the job. If you work hard, you might make it to the top, but keep in mind that a lot of people are trying to get promoted, so there's some stiff competition. What wouldn't people do for a promotion? Some set their co-workers up, and some suck up to the bosses. Some nutheads even attempt career progression by working hard. Weird people. The way it's all set up, getting anywhere by working hard is next to impossible. I believe a guy with your last name should have no issues moving up. One day you'll get promoted and enter that elevator, and everyone else will be jealous. So that is up to the executive floors, I'm assuming. Um, right, what's this? Effects. I don't have any effects. Right. We should always remember why we are here, and thanks to what. Or who. It's worth paying your dues to the person that sacrificed everything to his people every now and then. Remember, the wise leader is always vigilant. Everything shall pass, but the enemy shall not. Big Brother is watching you! Isn't he? This is where we hold general meetings. They're usually pretty mundane. People getting rewarded or reprimanded. Sometimes we also publicly condemn the actions of our neighbor, neighbor states. Some smart-ass suggested we call these, those meetings Five Minutes of Hatred. But as far as I know, got written up at once and couldn't ever suggest anything again. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it is Big Brother, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the idea behind a lot of these totalitarian state games. Um, wasn't it? Um, the Two Minutes Hate, I think, was the one in, in 1984. We also sing anthems sometimes. For example, this month I sang the main state anthem 426 times. Wow. Must have a lot of vocal practice for that. The Ministry's first floor area is 440,000 square metres. Incredible, isn't it? 440,000 square metres of bureaucratic heaven, uh, heaven. Yeah, sounds wonderful. Where the fuck are we going? See those lines? Every single person standing there has come here with a problem. Whether it's a real issue or not, it isn't up to us to decide. 
Our job is to send people to the right department. Oof. Those are some serious cues. This dude is a klutz. Always drops stuff. Keep forgetting his name. You can help him if you want, but helping others isn't something we usually do around here. On one hand, of course... Oh, there you are. You just popped into existence. Uh, on one hand, of course, they might be grateful. On the other, you never know what people are up to. Many of them here won't miss a chance to trip or backstab you. I wish I could say it's just a figure of speech, but well, it's up to you what you do. Let's help the guy. Can I help the guy? I don't seem to be able to do anything. No, okay. If you sit on the bank long enough, the river might carry your enemy's corpse by one day. What I mean is, neutral or indifferent, as many put it, position is a logical choice. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't care here. Nihilism is rampant in this place, I take it. Ooh. Heavy security. Obviously. Right. Oh. The mustache on those statues. Impressive. That food vendor looks very angry. <laughs> clearly not ha she's clearly not happy with the food she's brought out. Or the fact that nobody wants it. Maybe it's that. And here's the common room. You'll be spending a lot of time here working or talking to co-workers. Will I? Oh, that's that's reassuring, I think. Right. That's your desk. Take a look around. I'll give you your first assignment as soon as you're ready. Okay. So we are here. Um, right, so there's a telephone. Hmm. I'm wondering if there are going to be options to, like, wiretap the phones so that I can talk to people or listen in on people's conversations. Ooh. I don't know where I'm going now, I'm just exploring. I can't go any further though, so I guess we'll head back. Right, I don't know, I think because that was all just kind of side scrolly. I think if we're going to be getting into anything that's going to require like a mouse, I will just uh, stick with. Yeah, I can actually talk to people now. Beat it, I have no time to waste on you! Alright, fine. Miserable sod. Reports. Talk again later. Sure. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Mmm. It is a beta. Bear with it. Uh, what's this? Can't do anything with that. Alright. Uh, okay. Have you had a look around? I'll show you to your workplace and show you the ropes. Do you already know your job duties? Uh, no, give me the briefing. Tell me about my job. So, we're both in the reception room. Or, we people working in these booths assign visitors to ministries and offices. This is the front line of our bureaucratic defense. Only the chosen ones can pass it. Do you mean us? Do you think you've been chosen? People often consider themselves to be special, but in fact, we're all the same. Two square meters of skin, 206 bones, five liters of blood. Well, as long as you eat well and aren't an honorary blood donor. And eventually, we all die. Except for the wise leader, of course. But before you die, you need to work hard. You'll be dealing with visitors, listening to their appeals, fight, figuring out which forms they need and which ministries and available offices they have to go to. Okay. That time of day, is it? Uh, you've got to press the right buttons in the terminal, print out the referrals and give them to visitors. Right, so this is very much more a, a kind of papers please thing by the feel of feel of it. Um, much more on the kind of administration side of things. Right, about the forms. What kind of forms? Currently, we have four types of forms. Request, complaint, denunciation, and information. You'll select one depending on the appeal. If you're having difficulties determining the appeal type, use the hints in the terminal. Alright, what about the ministries? What ministries are there? In fact, there are many ministries established and abolished every day, and we never have time to update our register. Fortunately, the big six are always around. The Ministry of Order, Patriotism, Social Care, Labour, Culture and Sports. Oh, Culture and Sports, and Science and Technology. So just listen to the visitors carefully and decide which of these ministries to send them to. Alright, what offices are you talking about? Each ministry has several offices. You can see the weekly operating schedule of the offices on the right. 
Okay, everything's clear so far, in theory. Well, now, let's see how much theory differs from practice. Let's start with the basics, the forms. Your task for today is to process five visitors. You'll get reputation points for meeting your quota. Oh, right, okay, so they kept the, uh, the rep system in. Reputation? I'd rather have money. Even in our ministry, reputation is more valuable than money. Oh, Evan, sorry. <laughs> Evan, in our ministry, reputation is mo much more valuable than money. Anyone can steal or find money, but reputation has to be earned. Without it, you can forget about promotions, rewards, and your whole career. If you don't have enough influence in the ministry, your colleagues won't even talk to you. And that just reminds me of the uh, Black Mirror thing, with, like the social media, the upvote, downvote thing. That was a weird episode. What a good day. Uh, Alright. Well, how do I process the forms? Take your seat, get a set of forms, and start talking to visitors and filling out their information. Don't let me down. How can I earn a reputation? Oh, you get it for meeting your appeal processing quota. Don't let me down. <laughs> Who are all these people? The visitors? Well, they're just people. Not like you and me, of course. We work for the Ministry. And these are ordinary people with ordinary problems. Oh, you're back. Okay. Are you meant to be taking those this regularly? Hmm. When they can't solve themselves, solve them themselves, they come to us. We are their last hope, Evan. Remember, if we don't help them, no one will. They might cry, swear, laugh, even threaten you. They can be unpleasant, rude, mean, and cruel. But you must remember that they came here for help, and your job is to help them, I understand. No, your job is to process their requests correctly. As for help, that depends on the case. If you, you won't help them to your own detriment, will you? I'm the only one here who cares about strangers, and I stick out like a sore thumb because of it. Okay. Um, did you know my father? Yes, I was familiar with Redgrave Senior. Isn't, isn't it strange that such a respected person at the very top would deign to talk to peons like me? Why didn't you talk with your father? Uh, when my mother died many years ago, he withdrew, buried himself in his work, and sent me to the most remote university in the country. That must have been tough. The most hurtful thing was that you didn't even try to find out the cause of her death. Like she meant nothing to him. I'm sorry to hear that, Evan. But maybe you just don't know the whole story. Well, he's dead now, so there's no way to know. How long have you been working here? I spent exactly three years and twelve days receiving visitors on this very spot. Then I was promoted to floor inspector because I could recite all 769 rules, 242 amendments by heart. Not too shabby, huh? It was a useless achievement, but still. I just have to work another two years, five months and eight days, and then I'll be moved to Floor 17, the Control and Supervision Depi Department. How do you like it here? It's nice. I'm helping people solve their problems, and I'm taking care of them. Even though they don't thank me, I know I'm doing a good job. Okay. Well, who will I be working with? These people are nice, when they need you. Do them a couple of favours, smile, chat during the break. I do not recommend trusting them or sharing any secrets you might have. I've seen how many denunciations there are in internal control department. I love statistics and numbers, and even though I couldn't, or even I couldn't figure out how many of them there were, tons and tons of papers for processing. So I doubt that your secrets would stay secret for any longer than it takes to write a report. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to end conversation. I'm going to try this. Try this out. Let's see how we get on. Okay. Um. Desk, I think. Click that. Let's get to work. Right. Um, welcome to the Patriot Terminal. Oh, nice. He moves his little mouse around. Okay. Um, five forms by two o'clock. I'm assuming that means. Um, I think this is is this internal mail. I think. Beat binge drinking with working weekends. <laughs> Debtors brought to justice. Vending machines, the future of trade. Okay. Let's have a look at these forms. Stop printing the portrait of our great leader in the weekly newspaper. Um, so that sounds like a complaint. Um, hmm. That's going to be a complaint towards patriotism, maybe? Oh god. Okay, uh, information. 
Right. Oh, right, there's more dialogue. Do you have something against our leader? Oh, not, not at all. Never, you see, I? since the entire paper industry switched to propaganda literature production, our country has been facing a shortage of adsorbent. What? Toilet paper. As a result, newspapers are generally used for hygiene, and if the whole page is taken up by the leader's portrait, it's awkward. Right. Okay, so that is a complaint, a patriotism thing, I think. I don't know which office I need, though. I don't know what the office is. It, it doesn't tell me which... Ah, right, there we go. Uh, patriotism. Responsible for promoting the bright ideas, image, and ideals of the wise leader. Resolves questions related to propaganda and defense of patriotic feelings. Okay, but which... Oh, right, hang on. Uh, patriotism, right. I don't know which of these I need. Um, right, what numbers are here? 645 and 646 are not open. 606 is open, I think, because we're on a Monday. So is 279. How do I know which office to send it to? Uh, okay, I'm going to go with Office 606. I think that was one that was open. I'm going to try this. Oh, yes, I got it all right. Fantastic. Oh, right, next. He is to the motherland what rain is to the visit desert sand. What? Love the leader as you must, or you will soon breathe your last. Uh, can you please stop and explain yourself? Don't you worry, don't be stressed. Our dear leader knows what's best. I'm calling for security. Don't. I was told to bring in the new slogans for the rally, so I decided to test them out on you. What do you think? Impressive, huh? Here's the full list, 12 pages, all approved and signed. Okay, so that's another patriotism thing, that's, um... Okay, that's going to be an information document for patriotism. Uh, 606 is now busy, so we'll send that off to 279. Yeah! Okay. Oh. Right. Uh, I've split the atom at home. I want to denote the ro donate the results of my work for the benefit of our science. Here's my paper mache model of the atom in question. <laughs> Which office should I bring it to? Um, right, well, that's going to be science and technology. Obviously. Uh, which office is open? Can I just shrink those down? Thank you. Um, send it off to Office 390. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is... Takes a little bit of little bit of thought to process this, but it's pretty good. Okay, we have prepared a program for City Day. Who shall I pass it on to? City Day. I don't know what City Day is. Okay, that's going to be an information one, I think. Um, social care? Or is that going to be a culture and sports? I'm going to go with culture and sports, I think. Um, 78 is not open today. 404? No. 588 is open. Oh, that is it. Fantastic. Some of this is guesswork. It really is. Uh, Jiri Schnipp, my boss, has jeopardized the reputation of our rubber plant. First we made tires, then demand fell and we switched to police batons. Uh, and now he says we'll be making ducks. Rubber ducks. Please don't allow him to disgrace our plant. Right. Okay, that is a denunciation um, in labor, I think. And we'll send that out to Office 212. Yes! All five, perfectly done. Okay, let's exit that. Let's go and chat to uh, old what's-his-face. Right, performance report. 
I've met the quota. What's next? Great. Keep it up. Actually, I have nothing more to tell you about your work. You're on your own now. Get settled in, meet your co-workers, and earn reputation. If you keep at it and work hard eight hours a day, you could li you could become the boss and get to work twelve hours a day. Isn't it exciting? Oh yeah. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, George. I'll mark it in. I'll mark in the journal that you've had your briefing. All the required documents are in the cart near the table. Take them to Magda Magda Rakovic, the boss's secretary. I'll wait for you by the statue. We have more to talk about. Okay. So we've got to go and see uh, the woman by the the door over on the left. Uh, oh wait, uh, I need to take this. I think. Yes. Right. Uh, can't with papers. Reports. Okay. Good. There we go. Let's get moving, Evan. Away we go. Okay, Magda. Hello. What are you doing here? Hello. That's not a very respectful way to address an older woman now, is it? I'm sorry. What do you want? Uh, George Hemnitz asked me to give you these documents. You didn't look inside, I hope. I'm not interested. I didn't ask if you were interested. Reading sealed papers like these when you don't have top secret clearance can cost you your freedom. Or your life. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. But I prefer to not I prefer not to stick my nose into other people's business. I don't care where you stick any of your extremities. There are rules, regulations, and instructions that must be observed if you want to stay in the ministry for more than a day. If you make mistakes, nothing will save you. Not even your name. What's wrong with my name? You're still here? Don't try my patience. Sorry. Already leaving. Jeez. Mega bitch. Okay, George is back out by the statue. Let's go and find him. I really do quite like the uh, the new 3D style. I mean... It feels a little jarring from the first game, but... That's just because the game, the first one, worked so well with the 2D... 2D kind of... Well, more of like it was. It was actually 3D characters and 3D sets and everything, wasn't it? It was uh, just more that it ran on a 2D plane as opposed to having like a panning camera um, at different angles like this. But I quite, I quite like it. I think it looks pretty good. It's nice to see the uh, the kind of the art direction, well, not the art direction, but the the direction, the visual direction of the game kind of evolve a little bit. Okay, we're good. We're good. I haven't got any contraband or anything. George, where are you? I feel uncomfortable. What the fuck are you doing? Are you praising the sun? It's pissing down, mate. Uh, George? There you are. What a good day. What do you want to talk about? Evan, it's about your father. The things that happened to him were just terrible. I have to tell, tell you something. Go on. At most, 20 people in our whole country know this information. I'm taking a huge risk divulging these details to you. So I do have to ask you, not a word to anyone, okay? Okay. Let's have it. As you know, I was appointed to the position floor inspector several years ago, but at the same time, I was enlisted to work in Department 6. Department 6? That's a myth. No, no thinking person really believes in it. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Department 6 is considered to be a myth because that's the way their leader wanted it. More precisely, that's how your father wanted it. My father was the head of Department 6. And what were you doing there? Heimdall. A secret project helmed by your father was launched at that time. That's how we met. I was always too good with numbers, so I was invited on board to... assess statistical errors and their potential consequences. He didn't talk much about himself, but mentioned his son several times. And his eyes lit up when he did. He was proud of you, trust me. What else? What else? We didn't communicate for the last ten years. He mentioned that he was no longer in touch with you, but always hoped that someday you'd come join him. Why do you think so? He wrote you a letter a few days before his death. He must have known what was going to happen to him. A letter? Do you have it with you? No, I keep it at home. I didn't expect you to appear so soon. I'll give it to you tomorrow and tell you everything I know. Somewhere quiet. Thank you, George. I don't know how to thank you. 
Oh, don't mention it, Evan. Your father was kind to me. This is the least I can do for you. Alright. What kind of project was Heimdall? Not here. Not now. It's too dangerous. We have to find a quiet place at the right time. How about tomorrow? I'll tell you everything, and you can decide what to do with the information. Well, thanks for telling me about my father, George. We'll have time to talk more. See you tomorrow. Will we? Will you? I, I don't think you will. I think you're going to die, George. But I appreciate... I appreciate your, your gestures. Ooh. Hello, home. Hello? Who the fuck are you? Alright. Hello? I'm glad to see you, Evan. Do you remember me? I don't remember you. I'm an old friend of your father's, Evan. We were friends and we worked side by side for many years. I was a frequent visitor to your home, don't you remember? James Cunningham. Wasn't he a character that was in the first game? I feel like a, game, a name like that rang, rings a bell. Uh, your mother used to make fantastic rhubarb pies. She passed away a long time ago. I know. I was at her funeral, and your father's funeral too. Why didn't you tell me so I could say goodbye to him? I'm afraid your father's death is a complicated mess. Someone at the top decided to close it quickly. That's why I came to you. We need to discuss your work. How's your first day going? And everything's changing quickly. Just a week ago, I was planning to visit my father and introduce him to my family. In the end, I was late, even for his funeral. I understand, Evan. Did you ever patch things up with him? No, well, I was late for that too. Oh, I'm sorry. If I'd known it was that serious, I'd have arranged your appointment here much earlier. So it was you who arranged the transfer to the Ministry. It was indeed. Though, not because of your good looks, as I'm sure you'd guessed. Are you here alone? Where is your family? All is well. They're with Miriam's parents in Reading. Reading? That place is full of coal mines and some pretty aggressive workers. Not the best place for a woman and her child. I realize that. I have to get the apartment ready for them as soon as possible. Alright, I'm here to answer your questions. Let's ask about father's death. James, do you know anything about my father's death? Not much. The floor managers were involved somehow. That's all I know, and I can't conduct a full investigation. But why? After all, investigations are what you and your division do. Evan, I... the only insider I had in the Ministry was your father. Clearly he discovered something very important and got taken out. All the evidence disappears if we don't... Uh, all the evidence disappears if we just walk in the front door. So an investigation into the Ministry and the investigation of your father's death are the same thing. Ooh, this is interesting. We've got like a murder mi mystery conspiracy plot. Alright, let's offer some help. I want to help you. Happy to hear it. Find some dirt on these bastards and find out who's responsible for your father's death. I'll ensure they're met with the appropriate punishment. And where should I begin? I'm no detective. Your main task is to listen to what they say. Write everything down and ask the right questions. Then everything will work out. Okay. Let's begin with Pete Ferguson, your immediate superior. That wretch loves only money. You will see for yourself. And remember, the higher up you go, the more chances you'll have to make a difference. Don't miss those chances. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Call me as soon as you learn something. Um, I'm going to keep Hemnets quiet for the time being. Um, right. Why should I work here? Why have you moved me? Well, you see, I need a man in the Ministry. What for? If you can just knock out an appointment like this is this for, uh, so easily, you must already have in, uh, there in, enough insiders in there. Wasn't my father one of them? First of all, getting you appointed wasn't easy at all. Second, I need a man I can trust. So, why? I'm the head of the division that monitors the authorities. IAD. Internal Affairs Division. Exactly right. And my main goal is to find out which top officials serve the people and which ones defame our leader's name. This information can be obtained only with the help of an insider. That's why I need you. Slowly but surely, you're going to climb your way up the career ladder from the very bottom 
and shine a light in every one of the Ministry's dark corners. Ooh, I like this. What kind of apartment is it? It's a typical middle class official's apartment. I arranged it for you. Do I own this apartment? No, Evan. You can live in it for as long as you want. work for the Ministry. You still have to pay the bills, otherwise you'll be thrown out onto the street. As an IAD secret agent, you'll have to play by the rules to avoid unwanted attention. I'll pay your bills today, but from tomorrow you'll have to take care of them yourself. The Ministry of Housing is extremely strict, as you know. Even a minor debt leads to arrest. Respect for labour, communal property and all that stuff. Moreover, there are 603 people in line for the apartment. I checked. What about my father's property? It's been seized while all the investigation's ongoing. You know, Evan, I wouldn't get my hopes up. And the apartment where we lived back when my mother was still alive? I'm afraid there are already new tenants there. Sorry about that. Damn vultures. Oh, okay, goodbye. There's a lot of information. It's a lot of dialogue. Alright. Can I check anything? I've got nothing to check. I don't think so. I watch some TV. One of my tasks. Get father's letter from Hemnitz. Anything to look at on the telly? Oh god, it's all pay-per-view. <laughs> okay. Um, the Walking Boreans TV series. And Passion of a Leader. Target audience. Romantic girls. Ministry employees. Active young people. Okay. We're on episode 12, 1247 on Passion of, a lead, of the Leader. Wow. Okay, so that's pay-per-view. That one I can just watch. Okay. Let's see what else we've got to do. Anything in here? Can I well, do some reading, maybe? Uh, terminal guide. New skill. Hacking. Simple terminal passwords. Ooh. Ooh, and how to run a tenement building in pictures. <laughs> New skill. Rent discount by 10%. Huh. And that's going to be out of six, so that can presumably come down by quite a bit, but it does cost a fair bit. Um, I don't know how much rent is going to be. Okay. Um, what else is there to do? Just sleep, I think. Right. Um, so, do I need to go to work? Go to the square, stay at home. Okay, I need to get Father's letter from Hemnitz. Where do I go for that? It doesn't say. I'm half tempted to read one of these books. Maybe get the hacking thing. So I feel like that might come in handy. Let's buy that. And read. Oh, right, okay. No, I have to read it several times. Nice. Okay, I have the skill. Um... So basically, I need to buy this and then read it six times in order to get the rent discount. Okay, I get you. Okay, um... So, should I sleep? Or should I go to the square and meet Hemnitz? Is that where I'm going? I don't know. Let's, let's try that. Let's go to the square. No, not enough time for a walk. Okay, we stay at home, presumably sleep. Or I can expect this. What have we got in here? Nothing. Oh, it just lists off my bills. Right. Uh, um, yeah, Cunningham's paying for my rent and covering my bills today, isn't he? Alright, let's sleep. Okay. I'm expecting Hemnitz to be dead already. I don't know where I'm going to find him. Will I be finding him in the Ministry? Ooh. I don't know what... What can I do with that? Hmm. Intriguing. Okay, we're good. That's going to start like, giving some anxiety when we start dealing with stuff. <laughs> Alright. Hemnitz, where the fuck are you? Oh god, is there a, there's a meeting going on? Okay. That's George. George. Why are you over there? Dear compatriots and friends. Mm. 
We have all gathered here today, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, for a very special occasion. We want to reward someone. Our country is big, unique, and beautiful. We are united by common concerns and common pleasures, united by our long-standing tradition of rewarding worthy people in our circle of friends and wishing them the very best. We're talking about your colleague, Comrade Hemnitz. George, what did you do? The most vital thing is that we believe in ourselves, in our own strength, in our country. We work and we achieve many great things. I would like to sincerely thank you, dear friends, for your victories and achievements, your understanding and trust, and your genuine, heartfelt concern for our great state. Today, each of us can become a little better. To do this, we simply need to treat our parents with love and gratitude, give our children and family all of our attention and care, oh George, respect our colleagues, cherish our friends, defend truth and justice, be merciful and help those in need of support. I knew this was going to happen to him. But most importantly, we must never betray the cause of our great nation. After all, each person will be rewarded according to their deeds. All hail our great state. Peace and prosperity to our great motherland. I wish you happiness, health, and prosperity. Hurrah! Praise the sun. Dear, Hemnitz was hanged in front of me. I have to ask someone what's going on here. Magda Rakovic might know what, uh, might know something. Oh yeah, she's going to answer you, isn't she? What, what are you like? No bugs? I don't know. Oh, you, you're a janitor, I think. Oh, George, you poor bugger. Oh. Dude. Yeah, this game's gonna be brutal. Oh, young man, get in the line and wait. Okay. I'll wait. Alright. Magda. Okay, now what? Hemnitz has been executed. You've come here just to tell me what everyone already knows? You're the only one I know in the whole ministry. All you need to know is, um, all you need to know is who you answer to and where your workplace is. His death only makes my job harder. Uh, well, why is there such an increase in your workload? Hemnitz is dead, meaning that he can't do his job and therefore must be fired. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fucking DWP all over. He's probably, I don't know, he might still be considered fit for work, who knows. When an employee is fired, they have to hand over their official seal and secret do documents, sign the safety journal, bring the form saying they have no books from ministry libraries in their possession. But most importantly, he did not hand over his pass. The security service must have his things. Go to the guard at the checkpoint, say that I sent you. He'll give you Hemnitz's things. Okay. Let's go and grab uh, George's stuff. Can probably get the letter out of that. Fingers crossed if it's if it's there. If that's not been confiscated. I gotta say, I like the dark humour in this. Uh, that's, that's right up my street. Uh, I do find like black comedies really fucking funny. You know, but it's, it's stuff that you shouldn't find. You shouldn't laugh at. But you should, because it's healthy. You got you got to be able to laugh at the bad stuff in life. Okay, lost and found. All right. This is the area we keep employees lost and found stuff. Why are you searching this place? Uh, Magda Rakovic sent me. I've come to get Hemnitz's belongings. Take what's left. Left. Has someone come to get it already? A colleague. Got a letter and left. What colleague? None of my business. Shit. Okay. Well, there's Hamnitz's pass. 
I'm going to ask colleagues about the letter. Right, of course somebody would come around here, wouldn't they? Can I talk to you guys? I forgot the access code to my terminal. What am I to do now? It escapes me. What if somebody else remembers it? Oh, what a nuisance. Okay, you guys aren't going to be helpful. So I definitely have to consider my time management with this as well. Now that I'm actually getting into dealing with stuff. I can take half an hour to salute the statue. Sure, why not? Praise it! <laughs> oh, that gets me reputation. Okay, who can I talk to? What are you? I can take half an hour to inspect whatever the fuck this thing is. Weird. Okay, I don't think I can... And talk to anybody around here. I don't know what these things are. I don't know if I want to spend half an hour trying to figure it out. All right. I saw you being searched by the guards. What did they want? Who knows? They said they're looking for a bald man. But you have hair. Yeah, but I'm bald without it. Took a while to sort out. <laughs> He's got a fair point. Right. What is this? Some sort of gear thing. I can fiddle around with it. Hmm. Uh, can I talk to you? Who are you? I haven't seen you before. Good afternoon. My name's Evan. I'm new. Really? I'm Serena Marwitz. Well, here's my advice, newbie. If you don't want to lose your mind and your life, keep away from the vending machine. <laughs> Will do. Uh, did you by any chance take any of Hemnitz's things? No. Okay. Delicious pies. Get them before everyone else does. Okay. I might do that at some point. Uh, you. Hello. My name is Evan. I'm new here. Nicholas Page, the courier. Have you taken any of Hemnitz's belongings? No. Okay. I can trade. I need 550 reputation to be able to trade with him. Okay. Search this. It's not going to get me in trouble, is it? I don't think so. No. Um, can I knock, knock, knock? Hello. What a lovely day for work. Pete Dong. <laughs> what a name. Hello. Who the hell are you? I haven't seen you here before. Guards, intruder in the room. Easy fella, my name is Evan Redgrave, I'm new here, just started. Oh, I heard they hired some new guy. I'm Peter Dong, what do you want from me? Um, have you taken any of Hemnitz's belongings? No. Okay, well, that's fine, thank you. What's with the grumpy face? I suppose searching anything is going to be, uh, going to offer up any results. Alright, let's find somebody else to talk to. Oh, excuse me, madam. Don't mind me. Have a rummage? Oh, right, this takes time off. Okay. Good afternoon. Hello. Why haven't I seen you before? I'm new here. My name is Evan. Emma Hazer. Nice to meet you. Uh, did you by chance take any of Hemnitz's things? No. Okay. Never mind. Uh, you... <laughs> Look what the cat dragged in! Eyes burning, chest all puffed out. This must be the newcomer. The dearly departed Hemnitz was schlepping around the office the other day. Oh, uh, Marco Legrand. You seem like an arsehole. Do you know the most important thing you have to figure out during your first days in the office, rookie? What? It's who you are, buddy. Are you a wombat or a sun bear? What the... wombat? Sunbear, what the hell are you talking about? It's an elementary question, buddy. Are you a fat and harmless marsupial hiding in a hole, or a strong and dangerous bear that can take on even a tiger? You office monkeys are so ignorant. Haven't any of you been to Australia or Malaysia? <laughs> no, I can't say I have. Have you? Oh, well, uh, no. But my father often travelled there and told me some things. He promised to take me with him someday, but... Oh, you're Draco, aren't you? You're gonna be like you're gonna be the Drake over again. Like your name, your first name is even kind of similar. Mm. It's a long story. So, buddy, are you a herbivore or a predator? A predator, mate. 
So am I. Smart choice. We're small but highly dangerous. We're a dying breed in this office full of wombats. I believe that predators should stick together and control the herbivore population. I bet you do. I'm Evan Redgrave. Redgrave? The son of Caleb Redgrave? Wow. I'm not sure whether I should keep you close or tell you to get lost. Why? Buddy, it's just your second day at the Ministry and there are already too many dead people around you. Well, what happened to Hemnets? Didn't you see? I did, but I'm not sure I understand. There's nothing to understand. He might have failed to meet his quota or had some problems with the boss. The main thing is, there's no more Hemnets. Did you happen to see a letter in his hand? Hemnets asked me to take a letter from his belongings when he was being taken away. Where is it? Not so fast, buddy. I'm not your postman. Nobody pays me to deliver your mail. I have a great idea. Poor Peter Dong seems pretty upset about Hemnitz. He's even about to cry. And who are we if not sympathetic colleagues? I think we should try and cheer him up. Let's play a little prank on him. Us. Yeah, but you do the pranking and we both do the laughing. <laughs> you want the letter, don't you? So let's get on it. Get on with it. Take Dong for a ride and it's yours. <laughs> Phrasing! Fair and square. All right, my sense of humor isn't as refined or as subtle as yours. Emotions are the key. Find Dong's weaknesses and take advantage of them. Oh boy, I'm not going. I'm not even going to touch that. Ah, all right. I'm going to go and give this pastor Rakovic first, and then we'll go and do this prank. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Oh wait, this is taking precious time off of my day. Right. Here you go. I bought you Hemnitz's pass. Give it to me. Now I can finally fire him. It's good that he didn't have any library books. They're very strict about that. Now his promotion allotment is free. His promotion allotment? He was to be transferred to another floor. Now the position is vacant. Every idiot is going to be fighting over it. Okay. Goodbye. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so I have four and a half hours left in this work day. Do I have to actually do any work? Or am I just trying to... Uh, get this letter for today? I don't know. Um, Mr. Dong? Where are they? Oh, there you are. Well, what do you want? Um, are you all right? You don't look so well. You know, I can't seem to find the pills my mother gave me. Are you sick? My head is killing me. Um, show sympathy or scoff at him? Let's show some sympathy, I guess. Poor guy. I heard that some people get headaches so bad they just wish the ground would swallow them up. I'd like that too, but we only have granite floors in here. Right, use the fact that Dong is taking pills. How am I meant to do that? Right, poor Hemnitz. I only met him yesterday and now this. He seemed like a good guy. But he broke the law! So I heard. How could I have not seen him for the criminal he was? He outsmarted us. What do you mean? He always seemed so polite, so tidy. Never argued with anyone. Went to all the meetings, voted the right way. Though now I see why he protected me from Legrand. Why? He wanted to gain my trust and learn important secrets from me. So you know important secrets? That's none of your business. Okay. Care to tell me about our colleagues? Let's talk about Legrand. Why is the little grand guy always picking on you? B because he's a jerk and a b b b bastard. I see. He knows I'm smarter and it pisses him off. All he's capable of is pushing, pulling stupid and often dangerous pranks he calls harmless jokes. Last time he stuck an experimental car safety airbag on my chair that b b bounced me up to the ceiling. Really? A compression fracture of the spine is no joke. It's dangerous. And he just laughed. What could be safer than a safety airbag? I hate him, scumbag. P piece of shit. Why don't you complain to the boss? B because of Legrand's daddy has money coming out of his ears, so his idiot son gets away with everything. While those who want to work honestly can only rely on themselves. Doesn't matter. Just you wait till I get that promotion. Are you just like getting more and more wound up, or is it the, the lack of these 
pills that's getting you to stutter a lot. Um, can you tell me about Emma? What do you think of her? Nothing to complain about. Except perhaps her perfume. Well, what about her perfume? It's just this fragrance. Loving leader number three. It's so... nasty. No, no, on the contrary. My mother loves it too. It's just... Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Getting a bit of a... Um... Is it Oedipus? Oedipus syndrome or... Uh, Oedipus complex, I think it is. Um, right. Uh, what do you think about the boss's secretary? To be honest, I envy her a bit. Envy? Why? The boss always keeps her close. That's real trust. Some people say she's mean. The ones who say that are worthless layabouts. Magda is a paragon of discipline, perseverance and devotion. We should all be taking a leaf out of her book. Okay. Um... Okay, I, I don't, don't know how to use the fact that Dong is taking pills against him. Do I go back to um, what's his face, or do, can I can I spread rumors or something? I don't know. I don't quite know what I need to do. Uh, let's ask about Peter. Do you, what do you think about Peter Dong? Nothing. He's just a colleague. Oh. Okay. Mildly, like, a little bit harsh, I think. Uh, oh, right, yes, it's going to be giving me information, isn't it? Okay. Oh, right, I'm profiling... Um... Okay. Where's... what's his face? There he is. What do you want? Right, um... I don't know where to go from here. I don't know what to do. Can I talk to him again? Right. Uh, did you know my father? No, I can only I only know what happened to him. Surely you know more. Can you tell me anything? Everyone at the office is just d d dying to know the details. There's nothing to tell. We didn't talk much. A shame. I heard that your father was a well-respected figure within the Ministry. Now I understand why you're stuck in this waiting room with the rest of us. You didn't get a chance to ride on his coattails, did you? Shut up, Peter. Hey, you asked. So much for trying to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. <laughs> so how is it working for the Ministry? It's the best job in the world. Here we can be of real service to the Motherland. Everybody has to know their place and do their part. Oh, is it always so loud, dark and stuffy in the common room? How can anyone work in these conditions? Nobody's keeping you here. Do you know how many people want a job at the Ministry? Can't we at least open the windows? The Ministry forbids the opening of windows. Why? Directive number 9808, Accidental Prevention. If your father had followed the law, he would still be alive. <laughs> Leave my father out of it. Just saying, the law is the law. Even if we're on the first floor, the windows must stay closed. Even if the air in here makes me see spots. All the same, the windows must stay closed. Uh, okay. Well, I don't know where to go from here. I don't know how to use this information um, about Dong and his pills uh, to play with his feelings. So what I might do is I might save the game here, because I've been here for an hour now. I don't know how much this might get cut down to. Um, but I'll come back and I'll play a little bit more of this, just to see how the rest of this beta is going to play out. Um, but yes, if you do have uh, Beholder in your Steam library, you should have access to this. Uh, they have put it out as available to anybody that owns the first game. So, I'd highly recommend giving it a shot, seeing if you like it, and I'm so far, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the new spin on the Beholder universe. I think it's very interesting to see the inside of the Ministry and to actually play around with uh, getting to see the world, um, you know, the, the, the world that pulls the strings, as it were. I think this is going to be very interesting. It's, it's going to have a l much bigger kind of Big Brother 1984 sort of vibe compared to the last game. So I'm really interested to see what is going to happen as the rest of the game goes on. Uh, I don't know how much is going to be in the beta, but I will try to cover as much of it as I can. And yeah, just keep an eye out for when the game does come out. I think it's coming out in the second half of this year. Uh, it just says 2H 2018 on the Steam page, so I'm assuming that just means second half. Um, but yeah, 
I'm going to wrap this video up here and just say thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out the playlist on the channel for more Let's Plays on Metal Covers, and give this video a like or a comment just to leave your thoughts. And if you wish to join the ever-growing ranks of the Order of the Shield, subscribe on YouTube, chuck me a follow over on Twitch, or maybe even consider checking out my Patreon and becoming an officer within the ranks. But thank you again for watching this video, and I will catch you all very, very soon. This is Captain Meat Shield, signing off. that I've got, maybe respec some stuff. Oh, God fucking... <laughs> oh, you spooked the shit out of me, didn't you? Well done.